We are now doing our interviews today. It's November 18th, 2012. We're at the Boston International uh, Book Fair here at the Heinz Auditorium. And our first interview tonight, to this afternoon, is Peter Blackman from White Fox Rare Books and Antiques. Peter, how are you? I'm um, great, thank you. Peter, let me start off by doing what I always do, uh, something about your background. Uh, your family, do you have brothers and sisters? What did your mom and dad do? Uh, what, you know, where were you brought up? And that kind of thing. Give me a little thumbnail biopic of you. I even know the answers to that question. Oh, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> I grew up in the New York City area in Westchester County in uh, a few communities in Westchester. Um, I have uh, an older sister and brother. My father was an attorney and still is, uh, semi-retired. Um, my mother was a housewife. Um, I, uh, a sister of mine and I both became lawyers. Um, I went to college uh, at Yale. I went to Columbia Law School, practiced for a few years. I did not enjoy the practice. Uh, because of particular circumstances, uh, but I uh, was very appreciative of the education, and I think it was a useful background uh, in life. Uh, when you say uh, your, your dad was an attorney, he, how old a man is he now? Eighty-two. And he's or still, eighty-four. He, he's 84. still he's still practicing on a uh, tenuously. He he runs a foundation as well. Okay, That's so his you went to Yale and you went to activity. Columbia, and then uh, you practiced law unhappily for a couple of years. Uh, With what, frustration. I, I would imagine. Well, I, I don't think it's an easy job, no matter what anybody says. But what got you the book bug? You know, I started as a collector. Uh -huh. I was a, someone that read a lot, uh, enjoyed reading. Uh, and as a young adult, I would say I was not an antiquarian collector, I was a, a book buyer, um, but I did go to a few uh, book fairs at the Armory in New York, uh, made a few acquisitions, and uh, over time started to patronize um, a few bookshops, uh, not really as a collector at that time, um, I'd say I began collecting more seriously maybe uh, 13, 14 years ago, mm -hmm. in the late 90s. In the late 90s. And uh, I am a dealer that uh, really uh, uh, became one as um, a more serious collector. Uh, one activity led, to, progressed to the other. Yeah, yeah. Um, I found that um, in the hunt for things for myself, and as a collector, I, I had eclectic interests. Um, I came upon things I didn't necessarily want to own, uh, but I found that they were uh, interesting items, and I started to pick up things with the intention of selling them. I, and I, that led to uh, in time to myself being an avocational dealer and now a more serious dealer. When did you leave the New York area? Um, in 2002. Okay, and have you been up in Vermont since then? Or did you, no. you where did you go after New we, York? We uh, moved to uh, the Charlottesville, Virginia area. Lovely. Uh, very beautiful, great uh, book country. Yeah. Uh, because Charlottesville, is actually an antiquarian book center with the Rare Book School, and at the time uh, there were uh, a number of yeah. robust, oh yeah, uh, used and rare book businesses, um, and there still are a, a few of them, and um, uh, we uh, had a, a large uh, farm property there. I'm not a farmer, but uh, uh, it was enjoyable having a lot of open land. Um, alas, we uh, uh, had some cultural um, uh, tensions <laughs> we'll and, and a, it. A, a, a convoluted uh, dispute over land usage 
that is uh, far too uh, detailed a story no, to go into here. And so um, after uh, four years, I was able to sell that property and found that it would probably be prudent to move to somewhere in the Northeast. Mm -hmm. uh, when you say we? Um, I have a, a partner, Jeffrey uh, Peterson, who also helps out uh, in the business. Um, he is not um, a book person per se, although he has absorbed a lot of knowledge yeah. uh, indirectly. And okay, let he me ask me out of affairs. Let me ask you uh, another question. So after you, now, so you've gone now. You've gone fr up to Vermont. Now you're in Vermont. Um, where did you get the name White Fox? How, wh what's the, ge the genealogy to that? Well, um, uh, believe it or not, um, it really doesn't have that much to do with anything I had done. <laughs> um, uh, we we were engaged in equestrian uh, activities. Nothing to do with that. Um, but uh, we saw a, a painting one time uh, of a ship that was called uh, the White Fox. Huh. And, and it left that kind of an impression. Yeah. <laughs> and and Jeffrey was a good name for the business. Yeah. And the um, ironic thing is my last name is Blackman. Yeah. <laughs> and White so Fox why Blackman. White Fox? I don't know. Well, it has some rhyme to it. <laughs> and the... Uh, uh, Say so one other thing about the business name, there's also the ampersand and antiques. And when I started uh, dealing, um, I had a fair number of decorative antiques uh, that I also uh, 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 bought, sold, and, and dealt with. Um, I more or less abandoned that other than you know, some smalls and uh, book-shaped objects. Mm. And I... Uh, will bring to every uh, book fair a few, uh, I think, choice examples of uh, what I call full books. Okay. Um, I'm reading from your uh, page in, uh, that I took off the Internet so I could get some information about you before you came in. Uh, it says here that your concentration is on illustrated books encompassing diverse themes including caricature, costume, decorative arts, Sporting and travel, and our general emphasis with respect to this material is on the artistic element as opposed to the substantive content of the work. Absolutely. Okay, so that, that sort of sums you up from your page. And then you say your specialties are children's books, early printing, equestrian, fashion and costume, illustrated books, natural history, and philosophy. That's pretty much, pretty much what you and do. And philosophy, of course. Rarely has much illustration. Yeah, uh, I, would have I would think so. I would say that uh, uh, that has subsided. Um, I think if you visit my booth, it, it reads very visual. Right. And um, I would say that if anything, the emphasis has become more visual in terms of the earlier printing. Uh, it encompasses a lot of emblem books, which is also visual. Right. Uh, but I don't. Uh, restrict myself entirely to illustrated. I still do read. I still consider a, a content very important. Um, but there are a lot of uh, uh, very legitimate emphases one can have, and this is what uh, seems to work for me. Okay, great. Um, how many book fairs do you do a year? Uh, tell me, like, ABAA fairs, non-ABAA fairs. Uh, well, uh, Based on this year, uh, the number will probably be uh, a dozen. Um, I, this year, uh, did all the ABA a fairs. I also did Olympia. Um, and I became a member of the uh, PBFA, or the Provincial Booksellers. Right, uh, in England. Yes, uh, which sponsors some very fine but smaller uh, fairs. Right. Um, so that I could do those fairs that coincide with uh, Olympia. Right. Um, and I uh, have experimented with doing um, some uh, New England antique shows, which are not book fairs. Right. Um, I did the Woodstock uh, Fair 
in Vermont uh, this past August. Uh, my motive for doing that was promotion as much as sales. Right. I want the local community to think of me if they have things they think are, are worth uh, selling. Um, and I did um, a very prestigious Vermont Fair, uh, the Western Antique Show, uh, last month, um, hoping to reach uh, yeah. an upscale uh, local market. Uh, again, for promotion as much as for sales. What percentage of your business would you uh, think it, uh, do book fairs play? Uh, I think the book fairs are very important uh, for me. I would say my, they constitute uh, uh, at least half my sales. Really? Probably more than, more than half if you add uh, after sales. Um, and I think they are also very important for the internet business uh, because they have helped uh, uh, augment my name recognition. Uh, they provide credibility um, even to people that don't uh, do fairs. Uh, I think that, uh, or don't visit a lot of fairs, they will take note whether you are someone that uh, exposes himself. Um, when, it, when you're talking about the internet, uh, was it an easy transition for you, or did you just go right into computers without, without any kind of difficulty? Well, I'll tell you that I'm a big fan of the open shop, uh -huh. which is you know, a bit more abundant nowadays. Uh, most of them have shuttered uh, or are struggling. Uh, but I found that as a collector, as a collector, I always enjoyed visiting right. the open shop uh, for the atmosphere, for the interaction with the proprietor and employees. I've learned a lot from other people that way. And I find the best way to collect is to get uh, down and dirty and, right. and handle books. And not always you know, expensive books, but just there's so many directions you can go with, with uh, book collecting, but on the internet, uh, you don't really have that kind of uh, flexibility. You, know, you, you can do a search for a particular book, but you're really not going to, to get a concept of what else is out there. Um, so, uh, Back to your question uh, about the <laughs> my comfort level with the internet. Uh, I think it's a necessity nowadays. Yeah. Um, when I started to uh, uh, to sell and to buy, sometimes to sell, I was active an active user of eBay, which I don't do anymore. Um, I don't find it's an effective means nowadays because mm -hmm. of how that site has evolved yeah. more than how my business has evolved. Um, but I think it was in the late 90s um, a, good, a good tool uh, for me and for others. Um, and it fit in with where I was at at that time as well. Um, if I were starting out now, I don't think it would work. Mm -hmm. But then it, then it did work. Um, and uh, the strange thing about the internet, I find, is the, some of the orders you do get. I'm surprised at you know, how uh, some people who uh, don't really know your business will, will order some very substantial things. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's certainly brought together the buyer and the seller, but it's also created a race to the bottom. Absolutely. And that's... Uh, uh, the good thing for me um, is that uh, I, I think it has you know, added a little bit of uh, discipline. Um, yeah. I, I think it's incumbent upon um, uh, fine dealers, which I aspire to be, <laughs> if I am not, well. uh, to add value to the material that um, he handles. There's a lot of ways you can add value. One is information, 
how you catalog or describe a book. Um, sometimes a book needs a little TLC. You yeah. do that instead of, you know, I don't just sell uh, things as I, as I buy them. Um, if they have issues, condition issues that uh, can and should be addressed. Um, but um, you know, I uh, tend to avoid more generic material. As most of us should. You said you mentioned the op the open shop. Do you have an open shop now? No, and that, that is in part because of where I uh, live. Yeah. Uh, Did you have an open shop when you were in Charlottesville? No, at that time um, I was purely an avocational dealer. Okay. Um, I saw pretty actively. I um, uh, one year. Uh, had a consignment of um, uh, basically uh, a whole shop that had mm. uh, uh, this uh, young couple had inherited. Mm. So that kept me kept me busy for a long time. Um, but uh, I sold those uh, books via eBay by direct calls to. People in the trade um, in you know, various ways, depending on what the item was. Um, many booksellers that we've talked to on these interviews have had what they consider to be mentors or people that they've learned from or have looked up to uh, as they've begun their careers. Is there anybody that you can think of who has been an influence uh, for you in your business? Well, yeah, I feel that there are. Uh, so many people I have learned from, uh, and sincerely, uh, uh, as I uh, walk around the uh, uh, book fair such as this today, I'm you know, constantly uh, absorbing things from the more senior uh, colleagues, and also you know, sometimes uh, people that are uh, you know, perhaps newer to the business, but have some insight. Mm. And I don't want to single out okay. uh, anyone because I don't want to give short shrift to um, others. However, I will mention one person who is, um, as far as I know, no longer in the, in the trade, um, and that is uh, Michael Collin, who was a member of the ABAA and had a bookshop, a really nice small uh, bookshop yeah. on First Avenue. A long time ago. Uh, till about uh, six years ago. Really? That and I patronized his shop. He was uh, very genteel and um, I, uh, I would say uh, I was a dependable customer and patron and he was very generous with um, his uh, knowledge, and I would say that um, he encouraged me, for example, to list yeah. books on AVE, yeah. which I started to do. Is, it, is that the only site that you're on, or are you on other sites? Other than, I have my own website, uh, yeah. AVE, uh, Biblio, and then uh, there are sites like Via Libri, which are more Maybe or less sites. the same. Yeah. Um, you didn't mention a Libris. I am not on a Libris, okay. as far as I know. As far as you know. <laughs> because the, uh, the gentleman that runs my site, Chris Lands, uh, has some arrangement with other sites. I'm not sure what it is. Uh, whatever. Okay, let me ask you uh, this. Uh, what do you perceive to be the challenges facing the antiquarian book trade as we move into the future? Well, um, I think that um, um, this is a topic that uh, uh, is a constant uh, conversation within the trade, and um, for obvious reasons, yeah. I don't know whether I have any great insight. I, th I think most certainly we need to uh, Prop up um, the um, uh, universe of collectors, 
you need to uh, uh, impart our uh, passion for uh, books to uh, potential collectors, reach a, um, a younger uh, audience. Um, I uh, am optimistic about the book. I don't think that the e-book <laughs> is going to uh, uh, sidetrack antiquarian books, certainly not in the long run, um, and certainly not the type of things I uh, handle, right. which are, uh, in my uh, view, artwork right. and cannot be captured Very on visual. a computer screen. Yeah. But uh, even um, uh, just a traditional uh, textual uh, uh, book, uh, I think will uh, have a, a place and will be um, a very worthwhile collectible. And I think books are superior uh, technology uh, in terms of uh, learning about pretty much anything. Uh, there's nothing like leafing through a book. And I don't I think uh, a computer provides the same uh, agility, flexibility uh, with uh, just skimming. And um, uh, so back to what we need to do, we need to uh, I guess spread the word and keep I, I, on. I think you're right. It's very important pushing our uh, view. And uh, books are often very beautiful objects. There, there's the reason that uh, people of means um, express their uh, wealth and status with uh, beautiful libraries and. Um, I don't think that that is going to uh, disappear. Um, and um, in terms of just the, the decorative, uh, books are a really um, uh, uh, affordable alternative to uh, graphic art. Um. Let me ask you, of luxury goods. Let me ask you this question. Um, if a young person or an old person uh, came to you and said, uh, uh, gee, Mr. Blackman, I'm thinking of becoming a bookseller, what, what advice might you give someone in this day and age who came to you with that kind of a proposition? Uh, well, the first thing I, I think I would tell them is that they should ask themselves, do you really love the book? Are you passionate about the book? Um, because only then will it be worth your pursuing it. I think it's a type of item that you will only sell effectively if you love the object. Mm -hmm. um, then um, I guess uh, I, would, I would probably advise them to do something that I did not do, uh, which is if they've never um, uh, dealt with books, um, I, I think the most prudent way to, uh, to do it is working for someone else. As an apprentice. Absolutely. Uh, get your education on someone else's clock. Yeah. Sounds reasonable. <laughs> um, but, you know, different people have different circumstances, and I don't think it's unusual for a collector to start uh, selling because a collector, uh, uh, as he educates himself, will come upon opportunity. And so, but that's not someone that necessarily needs advice on how to get into uh, uh, the business. Such a person. And this is some, uh, a scenario that I have experienced. Um, I will encourage to do some smaller affairs. Uh, uh, to get your feet wet, sort of. Absolutely. Um, I, I, it's funny, but I even uh, had a conversation 
this morning about, about this. And I think that if someone is just a collector, they might contemplate uh, exhibiting. Um, because I think it's a good way to develop your, uh, yourself as a collector, to occasionally uh, exhibit. Uh, it, it's funny how uh, there are so many different answers to that question. One one person I asked that question uh, came back and said, "Own your own building," <laughs> which <laughs> that's kind of like an off the wall thing, but it uh, certainly well, sounds it's reasonable. To, well, <laughs> it's a, a good way to make money. <laughs> I would think. I would, I would think the uh, uh, real estate uh, appreciates. Yeah, but of course, real estate is known to go in the other direction as that, well. That's true. It, it all depends on where you have your real estate too. But and I'm sure other people have uh, made the wise crack about uh, uh, how to make a, a small fortune in book selling. Yeah. Yeah, start start with, with, a with a big fortune. Start with a big fortune. Well, that's a good note to stop with. We're, we've come to the end of our interview, and I want to appreciate very much your coming here, and I hope you feel a little more relaxed when you leave. Well, thank you. <laughs> okay. it was a